the theme is the dialogue between a man and a woman, which is what it is. And this album is part one of at least two. That's for sure. And we originally were calling it an ear play. Heart play. Yeah, it went to heart play, which still contains the word ear. Meaning apart from the, we hold popular kind of, you know, music on it, which we like, there's also a theme running through it. And it's also a story, but the story with not much description, just dialogue, you know, those kind of movies. <laughs> or a, a radio play, you know, they can't afford to have too much description and long panning shots along the shore and down to the little house on the beach. You just go, in the radio, you just hear, shh, 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 they start talking. We'd done 22 songs, basic tracks. So then it was like having a movie a lot of movie filmed, or like the, the way they filmed two movies. And it was a matter of which scene started where and which scene works for the next. There'd been a lot of shuffling around, as you can imagine. I was used to working with other people, but not with but not women, with you know. A woman uh -huh. who's a wife as well. Mm -hmm. it's totally yeah. different thing. And this time around, for some reason, we sort of regained our respect for each other suddenly. And uh, maybe through this sort of... Uh, I also think this album is body. just like... It's, it's just like the beginning. I think um, we've, we've got some interesting spaces to go to because we worked together before in many different ways, but still I always had that sort of vague attitude that I was, I was the one. You know, <laughs> I know all about yeah. this business and I know what a backbeat is, right? Well, now I know that she knows all about this business and she knows what a backbeat is and all, right, etc. And I think this is the, like the first piece of work we've really done together. Really? And for my part, uh, yeah, I just know that I will even be more wholeheartedly emerged in working with her uh -huh. in the future because of the experience of doing this this album. You see, in the early days when, when we were recording together, I was having great fun because she was so free form, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, but like when the engineers there. would talk, Yoko would say, uh, because she's trained musically, and I'm not going to go through her list of qualifications because it sounds like I'm promoting her, I don't have to. Mm -hmm. But she knows she's trained as a musician. Since birth! Mm -hmm. So when she would say to an engineer in 1968, even though it was a freeform jam, I'd like a little more treble, a little more bass, or there's too much of that, whatever you're putting on that. They'd say, what did you say, John? Yeah. Now, women are conscious of that now, and it's talked about a lot, but those days, I didn't even notice it myself. And she'd say, didn't, didn't you notice that when I talk to them, they answer you as if I hadn't spoken? Now, I know what she's talking about, especially it's happened to me in Japan, too, because wow. in Japan, even though... I'm well known there, she's the, the queen of Japan, you know? And so when they talk in Japan, and I say, um, you know, a cup of tea please in Japanese, they say, he wants a cup of tea <laughs> to her in Japanese. <laughs> and so I really know what she's talking about now, but this is, she'd been getting it a long time from yeah. engineers and anybody around us. You know? So I really understand it now, on, on not only as a feminist issue, but as, a, mm -hmm. as being the other. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, there's no more of the other now. When the two gather together, yeah. I mean, there's nothing you can't do. Yeah. So it's, as a power, it's very strong. Yeah. But of course, John has a, a different, I mean, he can't help it. I mean, with his different history from mine, he's a, a man and all that. So he has different dreams, and I have a different dream too. When it happens, it's really powerful. But sometimes uh, two people might be praying, but at the same time, secretly thinking about something else or whatever, but then it doesn't happen. So that sort of unified uh, wishing or praying, you know, is something that doesn't happen that simply. Well, that, that, that shows in the, that in the album too, because what's yeah. happening is that instead of... It's, the consciousness is to let's see what future or what we to use the term prayer, what we shall pray for together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's make it stronger by picturing the same mm. image, mm -hmm. projecting the same image. Mm. And that's 
by by secret. Mm -hmm. In the fantasy, of course, in the fantasy world, and you think about fantasy as separate from reality, but fantasy is almost like the reality which is to come. You know, so in that fantasy world, of course, someone like George Orwell would have created 1984, mm -hmm. which is the general trend of the male species, I think, up to now. Which is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, sort of he coughed. I agree with that. Uh -huh. That's what she told and, me um, since we met. Uh -huh. so, Interesting. That's yeah, why I, I said it badly this afternoon. And yeah. Yeah. It yeah, was but, you know, like H.G. Wells you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. People saying, incredible what they said happened. Of yeah. course, it's not prophecy. It's like a form of prayer. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's so it's what they call prayer. it, wish fulfillment. Right. The other day, they were, there was Honestly. another quote. Remember I showed it to you? A guy had... Uh, predicted which world war, the yeah. Third World War, and where it would happen, and they're saying, "Oh, look, it's happening just like he said." Right. And our game, or whatever it is, has always been when they say, well, "What are John and Yoko doing, mm -hmm. doing bed-ins?" We used to say, "Well, we want to do a commercial for peace on the front page of the papers instead of a commercial for war." Mm -hmm. And the reporters have gone, uh-huh, yeah, sure. Uh -huh. But it didn't matter what the reporters said right. because our commercial went out irrespective. That's right. I mean. They were saying funny things about us, but that wasn't the point. The commercial went out anyway. It was more important to face ourselves yeah. and face that reality than to continue a life of rock and roll showbiz and either go up and down with the whims of either your own performance or the public's mm -hmm. opinion of you. Because you can become a stereotype of yourself, you know? <laughs> and we, that's one thing we didn't want to be, in a way. And uh, and a lot of also, I must add that I found myself in a position where, for whatever reason, I always considered myself an artist or a musician, whatever you want to call it, poet, or mm -hmm. that, 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 that type of person. Mm -hmm. And the, the so-called pain of the artist was always paid for by the freedom of the artist. Mm -hmm. And the idea of being a rock and roll musician sort of suited my talents and mentality and the freedom was great but then I found that I wasn't free I'd got boxed in it wasn't just because of a contract but the contract was physical manifestation of being in prison and that I might as well have gone to a nine-to-five job as carry on the way I was carrying on it I just got myself boxed in mm. and there there's two ways to go you either go to or what I could term going to Vegas, you know, mm -hmm. and singing your great hits, mm -hmm. if you're lucky, mm -hmm. or going to hell, you know, going dying, mm -hmm. actually, literally yeah. dying. When I was in the art world, the thing that I really despised about male artists were that, you know, it was like uh, a setup, you know, like they would get one tiny idea, you know, like, all right, uh, I'm an artist who draws circle or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And then he sticks to that and that becomes his label. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gets a gallery who would promote that, you know. And that's his life, you know. And then next year he'll do triangle or something. You know? mm -hmm. And it's such a poverty of, um, I guess, order. And it doesn't reflect his life at all. And, you know, then if you continue doing that, for maybe 10 years or something, people start to realize you as somebody who continued 10 years, mm -hmm. and then you might get a prize or something. <laughs> right. And it, it's such a ridiculous sort of uh, routine. Well, you get the big prize when you get cancer and you've been drawing circles. And, and then die, for 20 right. Years. <laughs> and then the, real, the biggest one is when you die, but yeah. they give you a pretty big one for dying in public. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's okay, it. so th those are the things that we're not interested in doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why we ended up doing things like bed-ins, and she ended up doing things like pop music, mm -hmm. whereas she'd come from this avant-garde right. field, and I'd come from the straight rock field. Well, the first attempt at our being together and producing things together were the like two virgin albums, and the events we did, whether they were bed-ins or posters or uh, whatever the the events or films and things we did then, which is what we crossed over into each other's fields, mm -hmm. like people do from country to mm -hmm. pop. We did it from avant-garde left field, from uh, rock and roll left field. Mm -hmm. and we tried to find a, a ground there that was interesting to both of us, and we both got excited and stimulated by each other's experiences. Mm -hmm. 
we wanted to know what could we do together because we want to be together. Uh -huh. We want to work together. We don't want to just be together on weekends. We want to be together and, and live and work together. Mm -hmm. So the first attempts were the bed ins, and because that's what was that was the period too. What can we do together? We did that together. We attempted a few times to make music together, but that was a long time ago, mm -hmm. and people still had this idea that the, the Beatles were some kind of sacred thing that shouldn't step outside of its circle. Mm -hmm. And it was hard for us to work together then. Mm -hmm. We think that either people have forgotten or they've grown up by now. Mm -hmm. And it's, we'll make a set and foray into that place where she and I are, are together yeah. and not some, some wondrous mystic why, prince why? from the rock and roll world dabbling with this strange oriental woman. The other question people are going to ask is why do it with Yoko or why Yoko do it with me, which will be a question maybe in a year or two. <laughs> but let's say they ask why do it together because together is the only way that it is fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just uh, a normal couple. No, what is normal? We're just another couple. And uh, the, um, the things that John is saying are things that I'm saying. Uh, I think that all men and women are feeling, but uh, the only difference is that we're saying them. So there's nothing new in the album in that sense. I mean, yeah. everything that's said is just uh, an age-old feeling that uh -huh. we all have. Uh -huh. But the only difference is that we're not afraid of those feelings, mm -hmm. and we've been killed a few. Walking away is uh, much harder than carrying on. Because yeah. I know, because I've done both. You know, mm -hmm. I hadn't stopped since... 62 or 3 till 73 mm -hmm. on demand or on schedule mm -hmm. continuously and it was very hard because one always had that thing well one or two uh, you know this I'm supposed to shouldn't I be going you know like quotes to the office or, or producing something because therefore I don't exist if my name isn't in the papers or if I don't have a record out on the charts or whatever it is or I'm not seen at the right or whatever the game is. Mm -hmm. And it must, I was saying it must be like the guys at 65 who are said, somebody comes and goes, your life's over, time for golf. Mm -hmm. It's self-imposed, yes, but still the feeling was still there. Oh, you know, suddenly there's this whole big space that seems to be unfillable. And of course, it naturally got filled because that's the law of the universe. Leave a space and something will fill it. And it was filled by a fulfilling experience, mm -hmm. to put it in a little cute phrase. When John and I go out, they would say to John, um, what are you doing now? But they would never ask me because women are not supposed to be doing anything. Well, I would say, I'm baking bread, you know. <laughs> And they say, ha ha, what are you really doing? Yeah. I said, well, I'm looking after the baby. No, no, but what, what else do you do? Yeah. I said, yeah, are you kidding? Because, uh, yeah, and there were no secret projects in the basement because bread and babies, as every housewife everywhere knows, is a full-time job. Yeah. And there ain't no space. And uh, I got into cooking a little, and I used to say the yoga after made these loaves, you know, I, so I felt I'd conquered something, that bit about, you know, if there wasn't a mummy or a daddy to feed me, that I would have to open a can of tuna or something. So I, I broke through that barrier, and I watched the bread being eaten, and I thought, oh, Jesus, don't get a gold record, a knife, or nothing, you know. And I really thought of all the, the, the jokes and the sort of cliches I'd heard about women and about them saying that the rewards of... And it's such a tremendous yeah. responsibility to see that the yeah. baby has the right amount of food and not overeat and get the right amount of sleep because ain't nobody else going to do it for him. No nanny, if you can afford nannies. Uh, maybe a grandmother in the old days when the family was more extended than nuclear. But if, if I, as the house mother mm -hmm. for, the, for that period, had not attended to when he slept and when he doesn't, and still I get Toshi to call from the studio to make sure that he's getting in the bath by 7.30 because his nanny is beautiful and loving. But she just forgets what time it is, and he gets extended and bags on his he gets tired, and he gets exposed to colds and flu, mm -hmm. and I can't switch off from here. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and it's a in, in tremendous responsibility, and, and I understand the frustration of those women because mm -hmm. there is no knighthood, there is no uh, gold clock, 
satisfaction. There is a great satisfaction. I took a Polaroid photograph of my first loaf. <laughs> I, I was overjoyed when, when, you know, I mean, I was that excited by it. I couldn't believe it. It was like an album coming out of the oven and, and the instantness of it was great. And when they first ate a meal of mine, I was thrilled. And then when I, would, I ended up cooking for the staff, I was so <laughs> into it, so uh, thrilled with it that I, they would all be, there was about eight seats, people on the corner, and every day I was cooking lunch for the staff. Drivers, office boys, mm -hmm. anybody who was working with, come on up, you know, I love it. <laughs> and then it was beginning to wear me out. I thought, what the hell? Screw this for a lot, you know? <laughs> they'd eat, the, I'd make two loaves on Friday, they'd be gone by Saturday afternoon or Friday. Yeah. You know, the, the yeah. thrill was wearing off, it became the routine again. Yeah. So that the, the, uh, the joy is still yeah. there when I see Sean. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't come out my belly, but my God, this, you know, I made it bones yeah. because I attended to every meal. Mm -hmm. And uh, how he sleeps and how he, and the fact that he swims like a fish is because I took him to the Y, I took him to the ocean, mm -hmm. and, he, and I'm, I'm so proud of all those. And he is m my biggest pride, yeah. you see? Well, you, but you're talking to a guy that was not interested in children at all before Sean. See, I don't have any hankering to be looked upon as a, a, a sex object, male rock and roll singer. I like to look good and I like to be attractive. And, you know, I enjoy the, the macho part of rock. But I, I don't have any need to be the idol and uh, have people think, you know, that I just snap my fingers and teeny boppers come crawling in my bed and and that's the way life is, because it ain't like that, and uh, I don't want it to be like that. And, uh, that that's for, mm -hmm. for maybe for younger guys who just start in the business thing, oh, good golden groupies, you know, and that's <laughs> how it is. That's, I got over that a long, long time ago, you know? And uh, I'm interested in ourselves, the family, and making some music, mm -hmm. and trying to make something that's, that's, that we are proud of. And the other people then, then the other people can make the choice of whether they want it or don't want it or mm -hmm. what to make of it and what does it mean and we'll have all the fun of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not interested in being a sex symbol, you know, or, or coming on as some big raunchy guy, you know, that drops one woman, picks up another, and the whole bit. I'm not interested in that. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in even projecting that, mm -hmm. you know. So it, I like it to be known that, yes, she kicked me out. <laughs> it took me a long time to get back in. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I looked after the baby and I made the bread and mm -hmm. I was a house husband and let them understand that, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm proud of it. Mm -hmm. And it was an enlightening experience for me because it was a complete reversal of my whole mm -hmm. upbringing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the wave of the future, you know. And I'm glad to be in on the, on the forefront of that, too. No, the thing of feeling that one did not, was not justified in being alive unless one was fulfilling other people's dreams, mm -hmm. whether they were contractual dreams or dreams about the public fulfilling their dreams, or fulfilling my own dreams and illusions about what I thought I was supposed to be, mm -hmm. which in in retrospect turned out to be not what I am. The, that's why I was saying about had lost the initial mm -hmm. freedom of the artist mm -hmm. by becoming enslaved to the image of the artist, mm -hmm. of what the artist is supposed mm -hmm. to do. And a lot of artists kill themselves because of that, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be through drink like a Dylan Thomas or to insanity like another artist, you know, like a Van Gogh or anybody, mm -hmm. you know, or, or mm -hmm. VD and craziness like Gauguin, you know, mm -hmm. painting a picture for his child which he never spent any time with, you know, mm -hmm. trying to create a masterpiece to give mm -hmm. to the child, but meanwhile the child dies and anyway he gets VD and the masterpiece burns down, right. it's burnt to the ground and yeah. even had it survived, yeah. better he should have stayed with the kid, that was the conclusion I came to. Why? Why were you able to see that and most people don't? Most people would have gone on and did the next album. Most people don't live with Yoko Ono. Yeah? That's the main difference. Or don't have a companion who will tell you the truth and refuse to 
live with a bullshit artist, which I'm pretty damn good at, <laughs> you know, bullshitting myself and everybody around. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, maybe we're, we do it for each other, mm -hmm. but I can, that's my answer. Uh, here we are, I'm going to be 40, Sean's going to be 5, isn't it great? You know, we survived, he survived his 5 years, and I'm going to be 40, and life begins at 40, so they promise. <laughs> oh, I believe it too, yeah. because I feel fine, and I'm like excited, you know, it's like 21, you know, hitting 21, it's like, wow, what, what's going to happen? You know? And uh, it suddenly all came through me like that, in, in the form of song, although it must have been in my in my mind somewhere or other all these so the songs are really inspired songs mm -hmm. you know I mean there isn't one where I had to sit down and and uh, sort of you know try and make a dovetail <laughs> joint and I can't imagine how people are going to take it mm -hmm. actually I have a a hopeful wish prayer fulfillment that they'll take it in the spirit it's given which is with love and a lot of sweat yeah and life's experience yeah. of two people I was looking to I was too scared to break away from the Beatles, but I've been looking to it since '65 when we stopped touring. And I'm, maybe Paul had too, I don't know. I can't speak for mm -hmm. the others. But uh, I made a movie, How I Won the War, mm -hmm. with Dick Lester, which yeah. never got much seen, but it did me a lot of good. <laughs> well, it did me a lot of good to get away, and it was a withdrawal, I was in. Almira, Spain, and uh -huh. I wrote Strawberry Fields there, by the way, but I was there six weeks, and it gave me time to think and sort of be separate from the others, but still be working and not left in the house alone, sort of. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to think, well, you know, like, the, like a lot of people do, well, what can I do if I don't do that? And so from 65 on, I was sort of vaguely looking for somewhere to go but didn't have the nerve to really step out in the boat by myself, push the boat off. Mm. So I sort of hung around. And when I met and fell in love, I can't even, this is different from anything before. This is uh, something other, you know, this is, uh, well, I don't know what it is, but it's, it's, it's this is fine. <laughs> this is, you know, like thank it. you, thank you, you know. <laughs> the, it's more than a hit record, it's more than gold, it's more than everything, it's, it's more than, this is, something indescribable and so that's what happened you know we just got so self-involved that I did free myself physically from the Beatles but not mentally mm -hmm. mentally I was still carrying them around in the back 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 of the head although the initial love thing blinds everything everything is under shining lights and you want everybody to be happy and just like you and it's you know it's rather dizzying mm -hmm. later on the love is different and one can s slow down a little mm -hmm. it's not less it's just different mm -hmm. and so therefore I could lift out all this garbage that was still being carried around which was influencing the way I thought and the way I lived and all the rest of it mm -hmm. and then finally free myself from the the mental let's call it people mm -hmm. or 60s or whatever it was yeah. so the first one was a physical escape yeah. the second one was a mental escape you know when are they coming back and when are they going to do this yeah. and what do you think of Paul and what do you think of George you know, I don't think that old gang of mine, you know, that's all over. You know, when I met Yoko is when you meet your first woman and you leave the guys at the bar and you don't go play football anymore and you don't go play snooker or billiards. Yes. Maybe some guys like to do it every Friday night or something and, uh, you know, continue that relationship with the boys. But once I found the woman, the boys became... <laughs> of no interest whatsoever <laughs> other than they were all like old school friends you know hi how are you nice to see you but uh, how's your life you know mine yeah. that, that's it that old gang of mine it's all over you know that song yeah. those wedding bells are breaking up that old gang of mine well it didn't hit me till uh, whatever age I was when I met you which was 26 1966 I met but the full impact didn't we didn't get married till 68 it's all blends into one mm -hmm. big movie, mm -hmm. but uh, whatever, that was it, the, the, 
the old gang was over the moment they met her. I didn't consciously know it yeah. at the time, but that's what was going on. As soon as they met her, that was the end of the, yeah. the boys. Yeah. And it just so happened the boys were well known and weren't just the local right. guy, guys at the bar. These, these were guys that everybody else knew, but it was the same thing. You know. That's all over for that. Mm -hmm. But then everybody got so upset about it and angry, but we were so involved in each other, we just went and made the records and did bed-ins and sort of blasted our way through it. Yeah. I just sort of went to bed with this guy that I liked, and suddenly the next morning I see these three guys standing in re with resentful eyes, you know. <laughs> I mean, three relatives suddenly appearing, you know. <laughs> so it was incredible. Not the Buddy Beatles. Let's, let's have no more Beatles, Christianity, <laughs> or Bob Dylan, okay? okay? <laughs> let's make that, you know, because it all becomes the same thing, right? right. Her Indica Gallery show was like the meeting Don Juan. Yeah. You know, at first I didn't realize who I was meeting. Yeah. Okay. But because I got the initial game, I played the initial game right, is the, the reason we connected about the breathing and the apple and the yes and the conceptual money and the nails and all that. Because I said the right answers, I got in. Whatever the right, like, you know, the Zen koan. Uh -huh. Well, it's the same thing, you know, there are many answers. Yeah. And it almost makes it sound almost like a teacher-pupil relationship. It is a teacher-pupil relationship. That's what people don't understand. She's the teacher and I'm the pupil. I'm the famous one. I'm the one that's supposed to know everything, but she's my teacher. She's taught me everything I fucking know. And, and the and lessons are damn unlike. hard and I can't take it sometimes because th those lessons are hard. And that's why I, I'm the one that freaked out. When we were separate, it was me making an asshole of myself in the clubs and in the, in the newspapers. It wasn't her. Her life was ordered. She missed me as a human being and she loved me. But her life was ordered. I went back to her life. It wasn't the other way around. I think that love will never die. I mean, once you know somebody, you can never unknow the person. If they're not afraid of loving, they're always going to love. It's all right to be afraid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying in this song about don't be afraid to be afraid. Yeah. Don't be shy, don't be scared. You know, it's all that. You have to me why we met, you know. I mean, I don't know. It's like saying why were you born, you know. I mean, I can give you <laughs> theories of karmic you know, pasts and things like that, uh -huh. but uh, I have no idea why, but why it continues is because we wanted it to continue and worked hard to continue, mm -hmm. and what I was getting to, the point where there seems to be certain cycles that relationships go through, and the critical points are different parts of the different cycle, you know, different points on the, if there's a straight line, the different points, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the sort of bit, the, the new way of talking is like, well, you know, why have a relationship, we just stop and get another one. Mm -hmm. But the karmic joke about that is that any new relationship, presuming you're lucky enough to find a new relationship of any, mm -hmm. where near the relationship that you're giving up, mm -hmm. or exchanging, mm -hmm or walking away from, or have destroyed by inattention, or inadvertent, or mm -hmm. selfishness, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. that you have to go through the same thing again anyway, you reach the same point, and that's why some of the poor dingbats in, in my business, or in so-called show business, right. go through it over and over and over again, right up to their 70, mm -hmm. because they can never grasp onto the fact that they, they're going to have to go through the same thing again, and they get to the sort of the five-year stretch or the seven-year stretch or whatever these tension points are mm -hmm. that seem to be organic, mm -hmm. built in, like the tide coming in and out. Mm -hmm. When I was kicked out on a raft in the middle of the universe, I realized where I was, which was in, on a raft in the middle of the universe, and that uh, whatever happened, presuming I could have started another relationship, would have ended up in the same place if I was lucky. If, big if, yeah, to get to that point, to get to the same point again, it's like they say about karma. You know, you have to come back and go through that thing again if you don't get it right this lifetime. Well, those laws that are sort of cosmically mm -hmm. talked about, mm -hmm. accepted or not accepted, but if the you know the ones they all talk about, we all always referring to, mm -hmm. 
they apply it down to the minutest detail of life too. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, instant karma was my way of saying it's right. You know, it happens about a cup of coffee or, right. or, or anything. It's not just some big cosmic thing. It's that as well, but it's also the yeah. small things like your life here and your relationship with, with, the, with the person you want to live with and be with. Yeah. That, that there are laws governing that relationship right. too. And you can either give up halfway up the hill and say, I don't want to climb this mountain, it's mm -hmm. too tough, or mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to the bottom and start again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, we were lucky enough to, to get, go through that and come back and pick up where we left off, although it took, a, it took us some kind of energy to blend in again and get in the same sink again. We're not always smiling. I mean, you know, we have arguments and all that too, but I mean... No, we don't. <laughs> it's just a you know. We, we're very fire kind of people. You know, like, John is such a hot-tempered person. I no, I'm not. <laughs> I have a few moments. Do you mind if I... No, no, please join us great, you know, because we're talking how beautiful the world is, and it's true. Oh, well, today it is. <laughs> Yesterday it was terrible, so what the hell, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, terrible it's days, it's not, you know, well, you know it's I think life If it was bad. really bad, we'd kill ourselves. Well, it can right. never be that bad. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, steal from my lyrics. Yeah. For what reason, I've no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't steal them. Well, I mean, always, I had a complete set up, all you neatly. You, you have it there, and no, I don't No, no, they're all in my bag. You just took them. Do you want me to look for it? Which one do you want? I want beautiful boy, that's all. I know them by heart, ah. but I, I feel better if I can see it. You know, when I open my eyes from singing, I just Nobody controls me. I'm uncontrollable. The only one that can control me is me, and that's just barely possible. But that's <laughs> what life is about, and that's the lesson I'm learning. If somebody's going to impress me, whether it be a Maharishi or a Janoff or a Yoko, then there comes a point where the emperor has no clothes, because I'm... I do stupid things, I've done stupid things, I'm naive, but I'm also not stupid. Mm -hmm. So there comes a point where I will see, mm -hmm. you know, nobody can pull the wool that long. Mm -hmm. So for all you folks out there who think that I'm having the wool pulled over my eyes, well that's an insult to me. Mm -hmm. Not that you think less of Yoko, mm -hmm. because that's your problem, what you think of Yoko, what I think of it is what counts. But if you think you know me or you have some part of me because of the music exactly. and then you think that I'm, have, I'm being controlled like a dog on a leash because I do things with her, then uh, screw you. Uh, because, you know, <laughs> fuck you, brother or sister, you don't know what's happening. Yeah. I'm not here for you, I'm here for me and her and, uh, and now the baby. And, uh, See, you know, another thing is, of course, it's a total insult to me because... Um, what well, you're always insulting, right? <laughs> you know, I'm, I don't even bother to control anybody because, I mean, why should I, you know? She doesn't need me. You know, I have my own life, right? She and doesn't need also, a beetle. If I'm a con... <laughs> Who needs I mean, a beetle? nobody can be that much of a con because, look, I mean, my high shoot lasted, what? two months or something, you know, right? Mm -hmm. So then I'm, I must be the biggest con in the world because I was with him for 13 years, you know, right? I don't think anybody should be that interested in every detail of my life, mm -hmm. I, I, from Beatles to, to now. But anybody who claims to have some interest in me as an individual artist or even as part of the Beatles has absolutely misunderstood everything I ever said mm -hmm. if they can't see why I'm with Yoko. Right. And if they can't see that, they don't see anything. They're just jacking off to, uh, could be a Mick Jagger or somebody else. Let them go and jack off to Mick Jagger, okay? I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely don't need it. Uh, Let them chase wings, you know. Just forget about me. If that's what you want, go after Paul and Mick. Mm -hmm. I ain't here for that. Go play with the rolling wings. <laughs> but no, uh, just can we get back to this other stuff just yeah, a second? Yeah. Like you do, sometimes yeah, I can't sure let go of it. Mm -hmm. Because nobody ever said anything about what Paul having a spell over me when I was with him for a long time, or me having a spell over Paul. Mm -hmm. They didn't think that was abnormal, two guys together, they or four have. guys together, <laughs> in those yeah. days. Yeah. Why didn't anybody ever say, how come those guys don't split up? I mean, what's going on backstage? 
<laughs> I mean, what is that, you know, Paul and John business? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why, are, you know, how can they be together so long? <laughs> we spent more time together than John and Yoko in the early days, the four of us sleeping in the same room, practically in the same bed, in the same truck, all right, doing everything together. Yeah. Nobody said a damn thing about us being under the spell. They tried, maybe they said we were under the spell of Brian Epstein or George Martin. There's, a, there's always somebody who has to be doing something to you. Uh, we're the ones that cast the spell. The not. guys are all right, somehow, you know. Yeah, all the boys is all right, but you go with a woman, it's something abnormal. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that, I just wanted to finish no, that no, one no, off no, with no, that no, because no, Jesus, no, nobody no, ever no, says no, it, you know? That's true. That's true. You know, they're congratulating the Stones on being together 112 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whoopee. Yeah. <laughs> Whoopee. Yeah. At least Charlie and uh, Bill still got their families. That seems to be the karmic trick, mm -hmm. or cosmic joke number nine. Mm -hmm. That we can't just sit back and say, will of Allah, because we know it's gonna, the universe is breathing in and out, therefore we're going to get Hitler, then Christ, then Hitler, then Christ, to use those two again. Mm. You know, which because they're just convenient. Right. But it's not a matter of sitting back and waiting for Christ yeah. or accepting Hitler. Right. It's, we have to do something, but whatever's going to happen is going to happen anyway as well. Yeah. Both at the same time. Well, whatever is going to happen is an amalgamation of all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Que sera, sera, but we're responsible. We are, exactly. The future is ours to see. Right. You see, that's the only line I change in that beautiful song. Yeah. If we can't see it, ain't nobody going to see it for us. The idea of leadership is, uh, is a false god. And that if you want to use the Beatles or John and Yoko, people are expecting us to do something mm -hmm. for them. That's not what's going to happen, because they're the ones that didn't understand any message that came before anyway. Mm -hmm. And they're the That's ones that will follow Hitler or follow the Reverend uh, Moon or, or whatever. Following is not what it's about. Mm -hmm. But leaving messages of, or, of this is what's happening to us, hey, what's happening to you, sending postcards and letters mm -hmm. is what we do. Mm -hmm. And that's different. You see? Mm -hmm. And it, that... I think the idea of leadership and that is that old Judeo-Christian idea of the separateness of God, it, her, she, from us as being outside of us, mm -hmm. the other. Mm -hmm. the, we are the other, there is only one. So therefore, people kind of expect more from us than they expect from themselves. And that message was pretty apparent in the Beatles' positive, all you need is love. Mm -hmm period through the gift piece of chance bed in war is over if you want it mm -hmm. hard times are over for a while it's the same thread is there mm -hmm. but it is not somebody standing up and say follow me because this is how it is right. it ain't like that yeah. I am and she is only part of we're all in the same boat and we're therefore we don't, of each other, we don't we don't like fear the words. responsibility mm -hmm. and we don't take the responsibility mm -hmm. for other people's lives mm -hmm. we take responsibility for the whole thing because we're all responsible for mm -hmm. the whole thing if somebody comes along with a, a good piece of truth and instead of the truth being looked at the person that brought it it's like that w when the bad news comes they shoot the messenger mm -hmm. yeah. when the good news comes they worship the messenger and they don't listen to the message, yeah. whether it be Christianity, Mohammedism, yeah. Buddhism, Confucianism, uh -huh. Marxism, yeah. Maoism, everything. They know it's always about the person and never about, yeah. about the, what they said. But see, people like to personalize things. You know, people even personalize God. You know, when you say God, you know, most people think about this old man with white beard or something. They don't think God is an essence or anything. They don't know it's an old woman with a beard, do they? <laughs> no, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> we make your own dream. That's right. the Beatles story, isn't right. it? That's Yoko's story. That's right. what I'm saying now. Right. Yeah. Produce your own dream. If you want to say Peru, go and say Peru. It's quite possible to do anything. Mm -hmm. They're not to put it on leaders and parking meters. Don't expect 
Carter or Regan or John Lennon or Yoko Ono or Bob Dylan or Jesus Christ to come and do it for you. You have to do it yourself. That's what the great masters and mistresses have been saying ever right. since time began. Right. Why? They, they can point the way, yeah. leave signposts and little instructions in various books that are now called holy and worshipped for, for the cover of the book and not what it says. But the instructions are all there for all to see, have always been and always will be. There's nothing new under the sun. All roads lead to Rome. And people cannot provide it for you. I can't wake you up. You wake you up. I can't cure you. You cure you. Well, I like to daydream a lot. I mean, that's what I do anyway. And that, that takes me to places where I want to go. So, Joy and I will probably daydream a lot. And then think of the next project. <laughs> Gandhi and Martin Luther King, great examples of fantastic yeah. nonviolence who died violently. I can't never <laughs> work that out. Yeah. You know, no, I'm, we're pacifists, but I'm not sure. It's always that. Yeah. But what does it mean when you're when you're such a pacifist that you you get shot? I can never understand that. Well, we had let's say that despite it all, we had a good life. Yeah. And I think life is beautiful, and I enjoyed it. Uh -huh. And I am enjoying it. Yeah. And I think he would too. Yeah. yeah. So there's that feeling. Mm -hmm. In that sense, maybe I'm an endless optimist, but I don't think of all as well. People think, oh, well, you know, the world is going to end very soon, 1984, so don't have children. Or I think that that that's sheer optimism and, that's self -apart. That's and self -apart uh, a lot of children are going to just maybe stop 1984.